Thank you for the opportunity to present our work on the Victoria Continental Microplate Dynamics today. And the Victoria Microplate is part of the East African Rift System, which is the largest active continental rift system on Earth. And it runs from the Afar region in the north all the way down to uh, Mozambique. And it's made up of two branches. There's the eastern branch running down to Tanzania, and then the western branch running, running from Uganda to Mozambique. And together they encompass the Victoria microplate. Now, the present day motion of the East African Rift System, so the EARS, we can uh, gather from inverting geodetic data. And the absolute motion of Nubia and Somalia over here is more or less uh, northeast to north northeast, as you can see from these arrows over here. However, their relative motion is east west, as the arrows along the plate boundary uh, contact indicate. Now, if we take Nubia fixed, uh, the motion of Somalia can be described by a clockwise rotation around an Euler pole in the southwest Indian Ocean. And also the, <clears throat> the motion of the other microplates in the plate boundary zone, so Ruhuma and Luwando over here, their motion can also be described by a clockwise rotation. But <laughs> the Victoria microplate actually moves counterclockwise with respect to Nubia. And it's this enigmatic rotation um, that we were looking at. And previous authors have suggested a plume or a, like a mantle driver of this enigmatic counterclockwise rotation. Because we know from seismology and from isotope studies that there's this northeastward mantle upwelling underneath East Africa. And we also know that the Victoria microplate encompasses the Tanzania Craton over here, which has, <clears throat> has a cratonic keel that's probably thickest in the south. So that led uh, Khaled all to suggest that the interaction of the asthenospheric flow and the lithospheric keel um, somehow induces the rotation of the microplate. And also the numerical models by Koptev et al. of an off-center plume interacting with this cratonic block in the center show this induced counterclockwise uh, rotation from the, from the asymmetry uh, of the plume, the plume impingement. However, we wanted to look at like lithospheric drivers and controls first. So if we look at the East African Rift system indicated by these black lines over here, we see that the branches, they partly overlap and they are also curved. So in the, the relative east-west extension, there are parts of the system that will uh, undergo oblique extension like here, uh, this segment. And also what is very clear that there's this correlation between the location of the rift segments and um, proterozoic mobile belts from the Pan-African orogeny, which are indicated by all these dashed uh, areas. And finally, we can see that the branches seem to terminate against these areas that are um, that we can interpret as strong. So for example, the Western branch terminates against the Turkana depression, which is a remnant of a Cretaceous risking phase and against this pretty Cambrian fabric from the Aswashir zone. Well, the Western branch seems to terminate against the Tanzania crater, which is thick and cold and strong. So we were wondering, like, is it this configuration of lithospheric weaker and stronger areas that actually controls the rotation of Victoria. And our hypothesis was that the motion of the surrounding major plate, so in this case, Nubia on the left and uh, Somalia on the right, is transferred along the strong side of the microplate here and here to the microplate itself. So the, it's the drag on these, um, <coughs> sorry, extension parallel strong side of the microplate that is driving the rotation. And then the rotation is facilitated by these weaker extension normal sites where the crust fails. And this uh, hypothesis was inspired by the edge-driven mechanism that Schaude et al. proposed for oceanic microplates, like the Easter microplate uh, in 1993. 
So we tested our hypothesis with um, numerical models, 3D numerical models with the aspect software. And these models are on the scale of uh, the ERS. So they're 2,100 kilometers wide, 2,700 kilometers deep <laughs> and um, 300 kilometers thick. And then we prescribe far field extension on the left and the right boundary that is balanced by inflow through the bottom of the model. And what is important is that like in the location of the mobile belts, we, we raise the LAB, so we make it a bit thinner. And that means that the, um, wait a second. The, that the um, the continental geotherm is raised and therefore the lithospheric strength is lowered in these mobile belts. But in thickened lithosphere or thinned crust of the Craton and the Turkana region, we actually have an increased strength. So when we extend this kind of setup for 10 million years, this is the result after uh, 10 million years, and uh, I plot here a top view of the strain rate in blue colors, the velocity vectors in black, and then the little bars indicate the maximum horizontal compressive stress. And it's colored according to tectonic regimes, so normal folding in red, strike slip in green, and thrust folding in blue. And then what we can see is that the overall velocity field is east-west, so in accordance with the applied boundary conditions, but there are some local um, some local deviations, in particular within the microplate, which we can see if we blow up the velocity vectors within the microplate. So here we can actually see a counterclockwise rotation. Now the sigma h max uh, shows a more or less north south pattern that is then uh, realigning along the outline of the microplate. But this is a very uh, schematic um, geometry of the mobile belts. So if, oh, one second. So we can um, characterize this rotation by computing the rotation pole of the microplate with respect to Nubia. And that rotation pole then plots here, smack in the middle of the horizontal direction, as you would expect for this symmetric system. But um, in real life, <laughs> The ERS is not symmetric, so if we include the like the, um, the geometry, the observed geometry of the system over here, then this is our model developed, like model evolution over time to 10 million years. And we can see that the branches are no longer symmetric and they overlap much more. And the microplate becomes more coherent over time, as we can see from the low strain rate. So it's this white area in the center. And uh, again, we still have this counterclockwise rotation of the velocity field. And um, there are local deviations along the system of the um, maximum horizontal compressive stress, which is mostly in a normal folding regime, as you would also expect. But in this very oblique section, the Tanganyika Rukwa Malawi segment of the rift system, so TRM segment, we have this transient phase of strike slip folding, which we can no longer see after uh, 10 million years. Um, so if we take these results and again compute the Euler pole or the rotation pole, um, it's now off center. And we can plot it against the observed poles from the literature, which are these purple stars. Uh, we can see we plot uh, pretty close to all the um, observed Euler poles. But then if we include more of the lithospheric strength heterogeneity, so we have the Tanzania Creighton over here or the, like, the thin crust of the Turkana Depression over here, we see that these strength heterogeneities lead to more asymmetric drag. So on the southeast corner of the microplate, adding the craton uh, increases the velocity of the microplate, leading to a slightly larger um, rotation pool. And we can see also that the stresses, they sort of curve along the outline of the microplate and the um, the rift tip is also prohibited or like diverted by the presence of this craton. And then along the Turkana depression, we are also reorienting the stress and we have this increase in the velocity 
Um, so also the transfer of velocity to the microplate is increased, leading to um, this Euler pool over here. And then um, if we actually look at the motion of Nubia with res no of Somalia with respect to Nubia, we see that the velocity decreases towards the south. So if we include such a velocity gradient in our model boundary conditions, we in effect reduce the velocity of the major plate that is transferred to the microplate. So we have smaller rotational velocities over here. But because it's slightly more uh, oblique, we have this prolonged phase of strike slip faulting uh, along the most oblique rift segment that we still see after 10 million years. And the Euler uh, pool is a lot smaller now uh, because we have reduced the drag from the major plate. That's then, a if, and... All right, perfect. Then if we combine all of these uh, ingredients together, so we have this ERS configuration of the, or, well, the geometry, we include the Tanzania Craton, the Turkana Depression, and the velocity uh, decrease along the boundary. Then uh, we predict the following um, rotation pole, and this actually gives the best match with the uh, most recent Euler pole at the time. Um, which is based not only on geodetic observations, but also on earthquake um, earthquake slip factors. So um, to better compare the kinematic results with the observations, I've plotted them here in a different frame. So now the brown vectors in both cases represent the velocity of the plate on the right side of the boundary with respect to the plate on the left side of the boundary. So it's a different frame for both boundaries. And we can see that they agree very well. So in both cases, the velocity increases along the western boundary towards the south, and it increases towards the north on the eastern boundary. And we see the same here in the model results. And um, with this, I think we can conclude that the geometry of inherited weak and strong regions can control the Victoria microplate rotation. What we also see is that within this regional east-west extensional field, the rotation leads to a local east-southeast, west-northwest extension direction um, along the rifts. And it's this local extension direction together with the trend of the rift that then determines the stress regime. And the stress regime, we can also compare with observations. So on the left, I plotted the uh, data from the world stress map from Heidbach. And um, we can see that, again, results and observations match very well. There is uh, mostly normal faulting that sort of realigns along the rift. And at the very oblique sections over here, we have this angle between the stress directions, the rift axis, and the velocity fields. And then within the craton, so in this very rigid domains, we also see some um, north-south uh, strike slip and some east-west strike slip um, towards the eastern boundary. Um, now, what is interesting, within this very oblique um, segment, the model predicts some strike slip that's not seen in the observations of the world stress map. And here, uh, it could very well be what uh, Morley suggested in 2010, that there is this local mechanical anisotropy. So, for example, foliation in the um, uh, mobile belts that then also plays a role. And that then leads to um, just normal faulting. So if I come to my conclusions, first of all, We've shown that the edge-driven mechanism, so what we've sketched here, can drive continental microplate rotation. Second, oh, and that we do not need an astenospheric driver for this rotation. And second, that the geometry of inherited weak and strong regions controls microplate rotation for a certain set of boundary conditions. And lastly, that the, the tectonic regime is like the the, the combination of the overall east-west extension, a local clockwise rotation of the velocity field, the obliqueness of the rift trends, and any small-scale inheritance. Thank you. Thanks, Anne. That was great.
Are there any questions from the audience? Alaren, do you want to go? Yes. Um, thank you, Anne, for, for that nice talk. So uh, I, I was I was going to ask initially about um, the fact that we do see northeast extension direction, I mean, sigma three orientation around the Rukwa Rift. So I'm glad you commented on that. <laughs> So my uh, my other question is about the uh, southeastern margin of the uh, Tanzania Creton or Victoria microplate, um, to be specific. And uh, I do see that, of course, you know, in nature we do see that the eastern branch, you know, bifurcates um, in northern Tanzania divergent zone um, along the eastern margin of the of the of the uh, microplate. But we also do know that there is rifting along that southeastern margin of the microplane, which is the Usangu, Usangu rift and the adjoining rift to the northeast. And in your model, it does seem to be more of a diffuse rifting. And I was wondering why the rift is, your own eastern branch is just pinned right there, you know, where the um, bifurcation is. Because I assume that, you know, since you have a mobile belt wrapping around the, the entire craton, we do have weaknesses. I'm, I'm now I'm talking about model impl impl um, implementation. We do have weaknesses on that southeastern margin of the of the microplate too. So how how does the how does your model handle that part such that it does not allow the eastern branch to propagate further south with progressive extension? Yeah, thanks for that question. Yeah, I think you're right that this is like a result of the, the the setup of the model, right? So within those 10 million years, we do not see a lot of propagation of the rift, um, but we see the strong localization there where we have the um, initial weaknesses. And the initial weaknesses also interact with the craton um, because the craton is a bit thicker and then the while the um, the mobile belts are thinner and this interaction sort of determines the strength uh, at those locations. And um, the particular combination of those strength changes does not initiate rifting in the model setup. So I think if we want to look in more detail at the rift structures in the model, we also need to include much more detail in the rift setup, because there are there are other cratonic blocks um, in that area as well. There is like a like more complication in the rift structure, and that we we don't catch in this type of model. Um, and it could be very interesting to look into that. Okay, thank you. 